Are you a beginner crocheter? Possibly even an experienced crocheter, but you're looking for new inspiration, new energy, a fresh start to your crochet wardrobe? Then do I have the video for you. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Of course, it's your girl Erin. Obviously we have a change of scenery. We're gonna be filming down here in the colorful living room because I need a change of pace. So this is what we're doing today. Is your scrap yarn pile getting out of hand? Your girl has diligently gone through and created an entire slideshow of some of my favorite scrap yarn projects. So without further ado, Let's get into the list. By the way, I am wearing my brand new tank in case anybody was asking. I actually crocheted this for Jordan, but today I'm gonna be wearing it because I'm obsessed. And yes, I am making a tutorial and a pattern for this. So keep your eyes, keep your eyes peeled for some updates coming soon. <laughs> now with the change of every season, I like to kind of refresh my inspiration. I like to go through on Pinterest and see what's trending, what's popping off, what things I should be making, but I don't even know about yet. And I've also gone through and organized these into a few different categories. So we have headwear, clothing, garments, of course, crochet bags. And then lastly, we have just a general accessories category. Yeah, without further ado, let's jump into the makes. For our very first category, we have headwear. Now, when I think of a scrap yarn project, to me, bucket hats are like the quintessential idea of a scrap yarn project. So looking at this very first bucket hat, you can tell that they used a ton of different colors and just a little bit of different textures. They also look like they double stranded. So at one point they're using white and black and then on a different portion they're using like orange and purple. You can kind of mix mash whatever colors that you want. And if you look really, really closely, they have a slight wavy brim to their bucket hat. In a ton of these photos, it looks like they're using much tighter stitches. So possibly a single crochet or maybe even a half double. But if you're trying to squeeze in a ton of color, then I would really go for the single crochet just because you can see a lot more color changes happening in a really short amount of time. Now looking at this next crochet bucket hat, it's a little bit more simplistic. We only have two different colors, but the really fun part is that they use kind of like an intarsia carry the yarn method. As you can see, it's more of like a wavy acid looking bucket hat, but using only two colors, you can really highlight and emphasis the design that you're going for. And then the last crochet bucket hat that I stumbled upon is this really crazy textured one. Now again, it's very similar to that first bucket hat that I showed you, but as you can see, they added in a bunch of different, almost like novelty style fibers. You've got like mohair, polyester, super long eyelashy style yarn will make your project even more unique. So my first prediction for summer trends is gonna be a scrappy crochet bucket hat because whenever I go on social media, a lot of the hats that I see are either single color, maybe dual color, but there's not a lot of color changes going on. So for summer, we really wanna pop with the color, the vibrancy. Now for a project like this one, I would honestly suggest any type of fiber. I know acrylic's really great for bucket hats. You can also use a cotton fiber even polyester, wool. The option is kind of up to you, but for me, I think a lot of the fun comes from mixing and mashing different style fibers together. But if we're gonna be talking about functionality, then you might wanna keep it to either acrylic or cotton or the best of both worlds. You can do an acrylic cotton blend because we still want our head, our forehead to be breathable underneath a very thick project like this one. Now we also have a little subcategory to our headwear department and that's gonna be crochet scrunchies. Now I know what you guys are thinking, crochet scrunchies might be boring, outplayed, but let me tell you guys that recently I've been noticing this trend with wavy, over rippled crochet scrunchies and I came across a ton. So for this first crochet scrunchie, I love that she kept it all one color, but as you can see, there are a ton of increases, which is making it very frilly. To me, a scrunchie like this is very extra. It's very over the top, but for something that you're gonna be throwing at the back of your head, again, like a little wavy scrunchie, you kind of need it to be extra dynamic. You need that thing to be huge and in your face for you to even notice it in the first place, which is why I really like the super extreme wave on these scrunches. Now, if that's not quite your style, then I came across a scrunchie like this. Do we see this? I don't know how they came up with it, but it's kind of giving like a huge flower petal on your head. To me, it almost looks almost looks like they stuffed the flower petals of the scrunchie and then lastly they went around it with probably some actual lace and sewed it onto the scrunchie 
or you could also use like some mohair and go around and add some more frill to the petals. But this is the first time that I've ever seen a crochet scrunchie look like this. You have a physical flower, a five petal flower wrapped around your bun. To me, that's really gonna draw heads. Again, this photo here is very reminiscent of that first crochet scrunchie that I showed you. But as you can see, they did kind of switch out colors. So the main body of the scrunchie is one colorway. And then towards the end of their frills, like the last few rows, they kind of changed out the colors a little bit with like neon colors, hot pinks, yellow, lime green. So it's just enough of a color change to really add, you know, that little pop to your outfit. And for this kind of scrunchie, I feel like you only need like 70 yards of yarn at most. Like that's really stretching it, but you know, you wanna err on the side of caution. You don't wanna run out of your scrap yarn. So now if I can be completely biased, this next scrunchie is by far my favorite. The best way that I can describe this accessory is a lacy doily-like crochet scrunchie. As you can see, there's like a ton of frill. There's multiple layers. To me, it almost looks like they started off by crocheting around an actual hair tie like this one and then they just added on more and more rows with more and more increases now sticking with the headwear category has to be by far my favorite trend of this upcoming summer i'm not too sure of the correct terminology but to me this is like a crochet cap not a beanie not a bucket hat not a sun hat a cap now I'll be completely honest, when I first saw this trend, I wasn't too sure my thoughts on it, but then it was very reminiscent of Natalie Portman in Leon, the movie, also known as Leon the Professional. It's cute, it's cute, you can't lie. So I was scrolling around on Pinterest and I came across a bunch of different style caps that you guys could make. So the first few caps that I came across had this gorgeous sequin yarn. And if you guys are interested, you can find sequin yarn, I believe on Amazon, on eBay. I have seen it listed on eBay, so feel free to go check it there. But the sequin caps just give me something else. Like sequins could really up an outfit like this one, but if there's already too much color going on, go with a very simple basic outfit. And then you have that shining sparkly sequins up top that's really gonna catch your eye. I don't know if I have the courage to pull off an all sequin cap. Like again, I'm not sure if that's gonna fit my face shape and everything, but it just looks so chic. It's very, very different from a lot of the crochet fashion that's out there right now. I haven't seen anybody wear something like this out in public on the streets. It's kind of something that I see more just like on the internet, but I would love to be the first person that you see outside wearing a little crochet cap. This next little design that I stumbled across on Pinterest really caught my eye because you're taking that basic crochet cap, but you're almost making it look very like artsy and free handed. Now this one has a lot more of that negative empty space compared to the other ones. But again, it kind of has like that free form style. They have these really gorgeous like flowers or stars kind of wrapped all around your head. It's very, very basic. So you can see a lot of like your hair color coming through, but this, it's a really nice change up from that standard cap because you're adding in a lot of these textural stitches, a lot of that empty space. So it looks just more boho, more chic. And this is a really fun one as well to draw inspiration from because you can kind of just start off with any shape that you want in any direction, as long as it starts to take the shape and the form of your skull. I feel like a really crazy and eclectic freeform piece would make a gorgeous cap. And again, it's kind of something that not everybody can replicate. So if you guys are looking to like write patterns for caps, I think these are gonna be popping off right now. And if you thought that we are done talking about caps, we're not because I found a lot more. But as you can see with this one, they added in these really long tassels, which I'm a huge fan of. And having like those really long strands looks super cute. I think this would be really cute if you guys wanted to add in like some beads. Recently, I've been a really big fan of like fringe and like levels and layers of loose freeform yarn. So this one is kind of a nice little mesh up of the two. Another one of my top favorite caps that I found is this one right here. It's actually very reminiscent of the structure of the sequin caps, but instead it looks like they used a double crochet or maybe even a treble crochet and some chain spaces. So you're getting a little bit more of that mesh effect instead of something that is a lot more dense and kind of closely stitched together. Now my favorite cap design by far is this one. It's simple, it's chic, there's not a lot to her, but it's just enough to add into your outfit that really makes you look 
put together. I think this would look really cute in like a bright red or even just like an off-white cream color. Now we're gonna slowly pull ourselves out of the headwear department and we're gonna jump over into the clothing category. Now we've all heard of scrap yarn sweaters and scrap yarn tops. Those are kind of outplayed. We've seen a hundred of those, but I kind of wanted to focus my attention a little bit more into scrap yarn skirts because again, this is kind of geared more towards the warmer weather, the summer season. So this first option here that I found is a crochet mini skirt, but this design is fun because it has more of like a wrap style. As you can see, they kind of went in on their own and added on some buttons for some security, some closure, but a little wrap skirt for the summer is gonna be the perfect piece because again, it's hot out. We need something to show our legs and you can use up a ton of your different colors into one project like this one. Now, another skirt that really took my breath away is this scrap maxi midi skirt. They took on a little bit of a different design element. Instead of crocheting horizontally, normally clothing is kind of gone from left to right like that but the way that they implemented their style into the skirt is by working vertically for me this is a really outstanding skirt because the way that they did their color changes was not perfectly clean they didn't just work a certain amount of rows and then change color it kind of has like that carrier yarn style or like slightly intarsia so the colors are very blocky and like asymmetrical but that is what makes this skirt so fantastic a lot of times for summer we see mini skirts and super short skirts but for me in the summertime a little midi length skirt with some cowboy boots or some high heel boots looks so perfect and this could also be kind of a transitional piece once we start to shift into like the fall and the winter weather you can kind of wear this almost year round so this is another really great idea jumping to this next skirt that i found it has more of that basic structure that i was talking about you can kind of just wrap around your waist and work rows back and forth in the round so overall it has more of a kind of like an a-line shape straight up and down there's not too many increases that need to be worked but you can keep it really simple by just picking out a few different colors changing out adding in like these stripes these bulky sections these thinner sections and then to top it off you can use like a little i-cord to wrap it around your waist now over the last few months i've been hyper fixated on crocheting kind of like a scrap yarn maxi skirt so when i found this one on pinterest it it had to be mentioned here okay for the most part it looks like they are using the same style fiber and the same weight for the whole project but I know, like I said, a ton of you guys have bags and bags of scrap yarn. So this would be the perfect project for that because you can probably kill through like half of your stash in one skirt. For a skirt like this one, I don't think it takes too much math. Honestly, I would just start off with a very basic rectangle and then just kind of keep adding on rows from there. So there's not a lot of shape and form that you need to kind of like account for. There's not a lot of contours. For me, scrap yarn projects look the best when they are kind of just more basic and you're letting the color and the design stand out. Now, if you're sitting here thinking to yourself, Erin, these are all some very basic suggestions that you have for us. Here you go. I'm just gonna leave this one here. This is still like a scrap yarn project, but it's also much more thought out and a lot more elevated. With this skirt, she seemed to have used some kind of wavy design. So in my head, the first thing I think of is like a chevron or a zigzag stitch, but then the way that you can kind of play around and manipulate that design is to kind of mess around with different stitch lengths. So for certain parts of the wave, you can use really short either slip stitches or even single crochets. And then at certain lower points of the chevron, you can use really elongated stitches such as a treble crochet or even like a double treble, I don't know all the terms for it, but you can kind of just play around with different lengths of the stitch to manipulate the overall design into something that is a lot more unique and personalized. So if you guys want a little wavy skirt inspiration, here it is. Now, believe it or not, it was really hard for me to find crochet shorts that were made using scrap yarn, but the little bit that I did come across were these knitted shorts. What I really like about these shorts is that they have a super low rise. I know people are kind of on the fence, like the low rise versus the high rise, our low rise jeans coming back. Now, I don't know about jeans, but when it comes to shorts, like handmade shorts, these, these might be the cutest ones I have found thus far. And these shorts look like they were actually knitted with like super kid mohair. So it's a very, very fine lace weight fiber. But overall, using that lightweight fiber is what kind of gives those shorts the lack of structure. It's a little bit more flowy, a little bit more, you know, a little lacy instead of very structured and rigid. Now for the very last maxi skirt recommendation, I really wanted to showcase this here because 
If you guys are like me, you buy a lot of yarn in bulk, and then when you finish your projects, you end up with like four or five balls in the same colorway. If you guys have a ton of yarn in the same color, I would highly suggest to make a solid color maxi skirt. You can't go wrong at any time of the year, whether it's summer, it's fall, it's spring. Moving along to our next category, we have crochet bags. Now I'm talking tote bags, satchel bags, purses, handbags, whatever you can think of, we kind of got it in this category. I'm sure you guys know that I am very partial to like satchel bags over the shoulder bags and these ones really called out to me. Again, you can use whatever colors you want, whatever fiber you want, but when it comes to making crochet bags, if you want it to be functional, you really have to be careful with the fibers that you guys are picking. I would personally recommend something that has either cotton, polyester, silk, and then a nice little blend of like acrylic or maybe some wool. So this first little option that I have here is this very basic shoulder bag. It's kind of in between like a little handbag and a shoulder bag. You've got a bunch of different color changes, very precise stripes. And then the fun part is that they added on a little flap to kind of cross over the front. So you guys don't need a zipper. You don't. Need Need buttons you don't need a magnetic closure you can kind of just open and close it at your will another really fun shoulder bag is this one that I came across to me this is very simplistic I like that they left off the little flap so it's kind of just maybe like a little zipper enclosure but the rainbow stripes on this one really caught my eye if you guys are a very basic dresser like myself you don't have a lot of accessories then a really colorful crochet scrappy bag like this one is going to zazz up zazz and jazz up your outfit. I like that the strap is also very simplistic. It doesn't look super thick or chunky. Now for those who don't like a ton of color in your bags, I wanna suggest this idea because they made it using all one solid color. But then the really fun thing is they went in and added like little beads and charms to the exterior of the bag. Now this would be a really fun idea if you guys have some really crazy stitch markers. I think a design like this would be really fun if you guys wanted to go in and hand sew on some beads, some sequins, some buttons, just anything that you think is really going to elevate your piece. It doesn't really have to make sense. Just chuck on a bunch of different like enamel pins. Honestly, it could be anything, but looking at this piece, it really made me think of stitch markers. And I know a lot of you have some crazy, funky, gorgeous stitch markers. So using those not only for your knitting or your crochet, but using them as like little design elements into a finished project would be really fun. Now here we have another shoulder bag, surprise, surprise, but this one's a little bit different because she is knitted. So overall knitting does give it that different look. To me, this has more of like a garter stitch. So the opposite of these stockinettes. And this one looks a little bit crazier. Like to me, it almost looks messy, but on purpose. So if you guys aren't a big fan of like cutting off your ends, weaving in your ends, this would be a really great idea if you guys just wanted to leave them on again as like little design elements, have some fringe hanging off. Another shoulder boho bag, but this one is different because it has more of the free form design kind of like spirals and circles going amongst themselves and they're all kind of attached together. This looks very, very freeform. And then they made it very simple on themselves. They made a very long like checkered strap and then sewed it around the two bag panels. So this is really fun. If you guys like the freeform crochet, feel free to get crazy. However crazy that may look for you. Now this next project gives me more of a tote bag, a market bag feel. Again, this is a crocheted piece. So this kind of looks double stranded, maybe even triple stranded, very similar to how I made the crochet rug. Now, if you guys want to double or triple strand to make your crochet bags, this is really gonna add on like extra density, but also extra durability. I feel like the thicker and the tighter that your fiber is, the less likely it's going to get stretched out. So I really like these kind of throw over the shoulder market bags, good for shopping, going to the beach, any day occasion. And over the last few weeks, I've also been a little bit fixated on putting together a little bum bag or like a fanny pack. To me, this little fanny pack looks like it was made with a few very basic granny squares that were stitched together very meticulously. And then for fun, if you guys want, you can go on Amazon and order hardware for your bag. So like little straps, connectors, that way you can kind of change out your straps. You can also change the length of your straps. I'm a big fan of fanny packs. I think that they're gonna be coming back this year. To me, these are also very quick and simple makes, perfect for any beginner. So if you guys are looking to prepare for like a music festival, a music concert, something like Coachella, you guys should be making these for yourself for next year. 
Now this next bag is really cute because they took on a basic design, but they made it super chunky, like obsessively chunky. Not only do you have, I think like a number five or a number six fiber, but they made the base of the bag super, super thick. And then as far as the strap goes, it almost looks about the same thickness as the bag. This would be such a cute accessory piece to elevate your outfit. And I feel like with a bag like this, it's not gonna stretch out a lot. So you can really throw in your phone, your charger, your wallet, your chapstick. This bad boy's not gonna stretch out. Now I've saved the easiest and the best for last. This is gonna be a general crochet accessories category. Now the first things that I've been noticing on Pinterest kind of coming back into style, fishnet gloves or handwear. It's kind of giving like hand warmers but with zero functionality. <laughs> so if I show you guys these photos here, you have a very basic fishnet hand warmer, very, very lacy and see-through. For this, it's not about functionality, it's more about just fashion and design and adding on extra little layering pieces to your outfit. Another little fishnet design, but a different take are these little gloves. Now, as you can see, they didn't add in that little bit of a frill. There's no frill or fluff or lace going on, but what I liked is how they used kind of like a multicolored yarn and the way that they made this with the tattoos and the rings, it almost looks kind of like boho garden fairy, maybe even like on the verge of grunge aesthetic. So for me, this is more up my alley. The next bit of accessories that I found were crochet hangers. Now we all have this issue with hangers in our closet where they're too slippery, they're too thin. You put your shirt on it and seconds later, your shirt's fallen off, your sweater's fallen off. And the issue here is the lack of friction. So when I found these on Pinterest, I was kind of blown away. It's kind of ingenious, okay? You're taking a very basic plastic hanger and then single crocheting around the entire border. Y'all, there's no math that goes into it. It's so kind of freeform and simplistic. And the fun thing with these is that you can kind of pick out a couple different colors and change them out along the way. These have an actual pattern to it. To me, it kind of looks like the shell stitch or like a shell border, but they figured out a way to kind of wrap it around a thicker, more padded hanger. These kind of give off like that vintage-esque vibe again i really love these i really appreciate that they put a lot more thought and energy into how they are going to implement the design on the hanger it kind of looks like grandma's closet but modern if i do dare say myself so think about crochet hangers now another crochet accessory that you guys could make are these cord covers, wire covers. Now, to be completely honest, I'm not sure how great the functionality on this actually is. Is it actually going to stop your cord from ripping or breaking or exposing wires to the environment? Who knows, who's to say, but it's really cute. And again, really great way to eat up your scrap yarn. Project like this couldn't use more than 10 yards of yarn. And you're kind of just decking out everything that you own in crochet because who wouldn't want that? So. If you guys are in the market for like a little cord cover, take inspiration from this. And for our last little subcategory in the accessories department, we have headphone covers. Now, I personally do not own a pair of oversized headphones. I'm more of an earbud girly, but I might have to be making the switch to headphones really soon because these, wow, these are the moments that I live for. Now with a headphone cover, you can either cover the entire thing, the little ear pieces, you've got the head strap part, you can deck out the entire headpiece, or if you guys just wanna keep it simple, just make Make little covers for the round portion of the ears so not only do they have the little ear muffler part decked out they have the whole strap and it looks like it wraps around the entire headband this thing is fully enclosed my only worry is that this might keep like a lot of dandruff and sweat and other nice goodies trapped in the headphones but if there's a way that you guys can figure out how to easily remove it wash it and then put it back on I think that these would be so cute for the summer months. And ending out this video with the pinnacle of scrap yarn projects, we have another scrap yarn headphone. Now in standard scrap fashion, this thing is chunky. She's very asymmetrical. There's not a lot of rhyme or rhythm to her, but again, you just have that standard good old fashioned scrap yarn looking design. So for me, this has to be like my favorite headpiece out of all of them, but 
that's going to go ahead and wrap up today's video. I hope that you guys really enjoy these scrap yarn project ideas videos. These types of videos are always really fun for me to make because I get to take time just looking at pure inspiration, pulling different ideas for you guys and trying to recommend, in my own opinion, the best types of projects that you guys should be making, whether you're a beginner or super highly advanced. That is gonna go ahead and wrap up today's video. And please feel free to leave me a comment down below telling me which project from this list you guys are interested in making, what other types of videos you wanna see from me, other recommendation videos. I'm just here to help y'all and bring you guys inspiration. So yeah, let me know, please be my friend. And we just got more projects coming out soon like this tank, hello, do we see her? Perfect for Jordan, perfect for me. It's the perfect unisex tank and I'm over the moon about her. So at this point, I'm gonna make myself some lunch and get ready for the rest of the day. Bye.